This episode of Jimmy Cast features my wonderful co-host, Doug Meadows, from David Douglas Diamonds in Marietta, Georgia. Doug and I have known each other for several years, and these podcasts actually came about because we have a weekly Skype conversation where we chat about anything and everything. And one day Doug said, I'll bet you about at least 200 jewelers would like to hear what we're talking about. So we started this podcast. And it all comes to you from the wonderful folks at In-Store Magazine. In my opinion, the best, most practical and interesting magazine in the business. I personally love In-Store because I believe there's not an issue you can't pick up and implement at least one fresh new idea from it. And it's brought to you by the Jewelry Store Training Institute, a weekly 10-minute training video for your staff, training them on everything from best sales practices to operations to marketing. Now featuring Excella Management Training. That's right, we're training your managers how to manage. All from the proven curriculum of excellence developed by Brad Huskin and Jimmy DeGroat. That's me. We're not just training theory, we're training on what we've done. Learn more and get a free month of training by contacting me at jim at jewelrystoretraining.com. And now, here's our episode. So we're here with Doug Meadows. <laughs> we finally have to get to make it about you, Doug. <laughs> uh, that's hard to do. <laughs> but you know... You know, when we go to trade shows and things, one of our favorite things is to sit and talk with other jewelers about what's going on in their stores and hear their stories, right? Exactly. I so mean, I thought let's 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 talk to Doug today. Let's get in, let's peer inside Doug Meadows' life uh, at David Douglas Diamonds. All right. Uh, well, why did you why did you just start off by telling us your story? How how did you get to Oh, man. Marietta, Georgia. Marietta, Georgia. So in uh, 1926, um, uh, there was a lot going on in Detroit. And um, Babe Ruth loses um, the World Series to the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, Wait, you weren't alive back then yet, right? I, I was not. I was not. But, um, <laughs> you know, the people I do remember was Hugh Hefner and Marilyn Monroe. They uh, were born that year. Um but more importantly to me, it was uh, the year that my grandfather started us in this uh, industry. And um, he had a, a trade shop in Detroit and, um, and he just did a ton of repair work. Um, my dad and uncle took it over in, probably in the 60s, I think it was. And uh, during the uh, 1968 uh, Detroit riots, um, they were in the process of moving out to the suburbs. And so they had everything okay. out of their downtown location except the safe and the riots break out and they're trying to figure out how to Ooh. get their safe out of there. Um, you know, so from that tragedy in the summertime, they finally get moved to the suburbs in Plymouth. And in that January, uh, they're in a building that um, is right above a Sherwin Williams paint store. And right next to them is this old theater and it had a little tiny restaurant in there and on a Sunday afternoon, they were trying to do some plumbing work. And the next thing you know, you have the city's largest fire in 100 years. And Ooh, so wow. um, the, their whole, the whole building next to them was burning down. Um, the fire department's oh, wow. goal, though, was not to let um, the paint store um, explode because they had just gotten this huge shipment of 50-gallon drums of turpentine. And, oh, wow. uh, and so being that it was wintertime, they pumped so much water on this place that um, um, there was like uh, probably a foot of ice on the roof. And so the fire department would not allow my dad and uncle to go back into their, their place of business until springtime. And so I'm like, you know, when you're a kid and you're going through this, it's a lot of fun. You know, you get to go see the fire trucks and all this stuff. My, goodness. my dad's out there freezing off his butt, trying to help out chip off the ice on the buckles of these fire coats for the firemen and get him a warm cup of coffee. Um, but um, but here, you know, between oh the Detroit riots and a major fire, I can't even imagine what was going on, you know, emotionally in their lives. Um, sure. From, I mean, just the idea, my dad had four four boys, mom and dad had four boys, and um, you know, just the responsibility of feeding us and taking care of us. And 
if you don't work, you know, you don't get a check. And so that's right. Um, that's they right. had to move down the street in, in the bottom of an old bank building, which, again, for a little kid, it was like a playground. I mean, I had a blast, but um, but kind of quickly fast forwarding um, during high school and stuff. Uh, my dad would make me go into the shop in the summertime and do the polish. And then, you know, I began to learn um, how sure. to clean the toilets and scrub the floors, but then size sure. the rings and solder the chains. And um, and so I was Sound like a business owner. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I got tired of the cold and snow in uh, 82 and um, made the uh, a move here to Georgia. I had a temporary stop in um, in a retail jewelry store. I worked with one of my brothers, Dan, in a, in a um, jewelry store in Fairlane Town Center. It was right across the street from the world headquarters of Ford Motor Company. And uh, it was one of those new contemporary malls. It was three stories to it. Um, the jeweler, um, mm -hmm. he built the shop in on display. So my brother was the jeweler in the window. And, um, you, you know, nobody had ever uh -huh. seen that before. Now it's pretty common, but it was just, it was so much fun. I mean, we would get flash paper <laughs> from the, um, um, the uh, trick shops and uh, scare little kids to death because uh, we would have our, we had these little uh, burning lamps uh, to light our torches back in the day. And my yep. brother would just wrap that up and he would just kind of throw it across uh, the flame and this big <laughs> flame would jump up in front of these kids and they'd all jump back. Um, That's beautiful. Every now and then he'd get girls lifting up their tops and flashing them. I mean, it was just crazy stuff. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but um, but that was my introduction the glamorous to glamorous life of a jeweler. Yeah. My, my <laughs> first introduction to retail slash Benchman kind of an idea. And one of the guys I worked with there, his name was Merle Maddox, and um, his dad was vice president of American Motors. And so Merle was kind of a gypsy growing up. I mean, because his dad was an executive with the motor company, they moved him around a lot. And so Merle never felt like he had one place that he called home and he enjoyed that. And so he learned to be a jeweler and he knew that he could really go anywhere and get a job. And um, right. And yeah. so he just enjoyed that. I mean, he would go live in a in an area for a year and just see if he liked it. Um, and then I got to meet right. him. He went to Georgia and um, he invited me on down. And, you know, growing up as a little kid coming from Detroit, uh, my family background is sadly relatively prejudiced. Um, mm. And so my um, we we had an aunt and an, uh, I had an uncle and my grandfather had moved to Florida to retire. And uh, my grandma and aunt would take me on down to Florida. But we would stop at the Georgia Tennessee border, um, gas up, um, eat up, clean up and drive nonstop through mm -hmm. Georgia because Georgia was nothing but dirty and uh, wasn't a good place to be. And so they just wanted to get through it. And so I had this misconception mm -hmm. of what Georgia and Atlanta was all about. Sure. And so my buddy invited me down. So I went down for a summer vacation for a week and oh my goodness, I fell in love with Atlanta. I mean, he had a catamaran. We went sailing on Lake Lanier. We went to Dante's down the hatch. I mean, he spoiled me rotten and I felt like uh -huh. a king and, and just had so much fun. I'm like, I like this place. I want to move here. <laughs> and um, so... <laughs> he invited me to move on down and, and go in partnership with him. And so um, I jumped on that. Um, I don't know how I did all this stuff as I look back. I mean, I um, <laughs> um, packed up a truck, drove it on down here, uh, scraped up enough money to put a deposit on a house. I bought my first house um, and I'm 20, 23 years old doing all this stuff. Sure. Um, right after I get here, uh, Merle um, informs me that um, the guy, we, were, we had a lease department inside of a retail store. So we were inside of a mall and we had, you know, literally probably, I don't know, 10 square feet. I mean, it was dinky. It was like a New York shop. And uh, we provided that owner of that retail store all the services. We did all of his sizing and 
um, all of his repairs and the custom work and stuff. And, um, and so he decided he wanted to get out of this and get into fast food business. Um, and okay. so he was trying to sell the store and here, you know, I just bring my wife on down. I just buy a house. What am I going to do? You know, I mean, we, mm-hmm. here I, I think I've got a great job or a great opportunity and, and now it's just disappearing. Um, yeah. so my partner Merle, he's got this great idea. He goes, let's buy the store, you know? And I'm like, how are mm-hmm. we going to do that? And he goes, I don't know. Let's try it. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we begged, borrowed and stole from everybody. Um, we, we bought it. Uh, we owned it. Mm-hmm. Um, and now this is back before you got computers, before you got cell phones. Um, I mean, everything was handwritten. You know, there wasn't really a cash register other than a little cash drawer. And um, mm-hmm. so we weren't the best. We were both great jewelers, but we weren't good right. business owners or um, uh uh, but, not, but not uncommon in our business, right? Exactly. But I not mean, not uncommon at all. <laughs> well, I, I forget the name of that book um, the, about the entrepreneur progression of, you know, you, you work somewhere and then you think, oh, I can do this. And so you start your own place of business mm-hmm. and, right. um, and you just kind of stumble your way through all this stuff. And, um, and, and <laughs> you know, we definitely stumbled. I mean, we ended up successfully running the business into bankruptcy. And, um, (laughs) I mean, you talk about an emotional mess. I mean, it was, it was not fun. And, um, but there is life after bankruptcy. But Doug, who doesn't have a story like this? Who doesn't have a story like Exactly. I mean, we all have. Financial catastrophe. Yeah. I mean, we all can share some, some crazy stories of our lives and, (laughs) and different things. And, um. But I, you know, during all that, I was I was hungry. I was hungry for a lot of different things, and I was um, I was hungry to be successful. I was hungry for um, like a biblical knowledge of how to run my business. Um, I really right. longed for that faith element um, to uh, be amplified in in running a business, and I was not doing a good mm-hmm. job at that. And um, you know, here in Atlanta, one of the really cool things is we have so many cool ministries. Um, we had Walk Through the Bible. We had Larry Burkett with Christian Financial Concepts. Uh, we had Fellowship of Companies for Christ International. And so, you know, I began to kind of hang on some of those guys and, um, and mm-hmm. you know, get encouraged and get some good words of wisdom from some really good people over all those tough times. And... Um, and even yeah. um, my pastor today, he was a very successful business owner. He had um, owned hospitals and uh, sold them all in his 30s and retired and went in full time into mm-hmm. the ministry. And so he had a, he he worked with um, Arthur Anderson. So he had a lot of Ooh. business experience. And um, he actually once I got out of that bankruptcy, he became a silent partner for me for a season to help me get me back on my feet. And that's when I brought okay. my brother Dave on down from Michigan. Um, and that's how we ended up with our David Douglas. So he's Douglas. the Dave and the David Douglas. He's the Dave of the David Douglas. So we took Dave's name okay. and my name and put them together. My mom and dad had four boys. There was Don, Dan, okay. Dave, and Doug. And then our middle <laughs> names all start with the letter G. And uh, so we all have the same monogram. And so I was the youngest of the four. I got that old tattered monogram sweater that got handed down. Um, sure. as people would do, but, um, I had it too I had it. <laughs> with but, the triangle, right? Is yeah. The yeah. There you go. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so uh, where are we at today? Where, you know, uh, obviously there's been, it's been a bumpy road and who, you know, like I said, whose road hasn't been bumpy. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, so where are we at today, uh, with the, you know, well, the family and succession? And- sure. Real quickly. Um, you know, me and Dave, we were together for many, many years. And then Dave had the foresight to say, hey, let's split up the company. We didn't enjoy working with our cousins and uncles. And let's not put our mm-hmm. kids through that. We had two stores okay. at the time. He kept um, our Woodstock location and um, he let me keep the Marietta location. Um, he allowed me to keep the name of the, the company and he 
changed the name of his store to Art Jewelers um, after our grandfather. Our grandfather name was Arthur Meadows. And um, when he first started, his company was called Art Jewelers. And so Dave kind of inherited that. Um, okay. You know, now I have my son working with me, Joseph, and he's been uh, working hard here since he was 13. And he's getting uh, mm-hmm. Sunday, he's turning uh, 28. Um, <laughs> and, you know, going through um, some tough times, you know, 15 years ago or so, actually 10 years ago, uh, we went through some odd things again, some financial challenges. And uh, um, I had the state of Georgia knocking on my door, wanting some mm-hmm. uh, back sales tax from 15 years prior. And um, and I just didn't have it. And so they basically shut me down. Um, two months hmm. before they did that, uh, we had started they, wait, Joseph. Wait, they, his old they shut first. you down so you could so you could find the money to. Pay oh yeah, this. definitely. Yeah, okay. yeah. They, they, their their logic was crazy. Sense. And what was so funny is, um, you know, when they came in, I go, I am so glad you guys are here. And uh, they go, Are you crazy? And I go, No, because now you'll finally talk to me. I'd been trying to have a conversation with them for three years prior to that, and sure. everything was no, no, no. You can't do it that way. Well, I finally got to do what I wanted to do and needed was able to do. And okay. uh, and but we basically we'd started a corporation for Joseph two months prior and we literally flipped the switch and reopened the next day under Joseph's new company. And um, oh, so nice. I can't even sign a paycheck. And uh, Joseph is uh, the owner of the company now. So okay. I took care of a, a lot of problems that I hear a lot of jewelers having with succession and how do you deal with your kids? And it was just all decided for me. <laughs> <laughs> So I hope he has uh, compassion for his father and takes good care of him in his elderly years. <laughs> that's right. The way it used to be. Uh, that's the right. Way it used to right. be. But um, well, okay. So um, you've been, you know, you've been through a lot, and uh, there would definitely be a lot of cocktails uh, going down, telling your story because we could we could tell this story for a long time. There's a lot of there's a lot of fun details, a lot of crazy uh, stuff. How how you and I met, uh, how you and I started working together, and things like that. But um, wait, okay, so somebody is 21 years old and uh, they just started in the jewelry business, and they're thinking, "Hey, I'd like to have my own jewelry store someday." What advice do you have for them? <laughs> well, you know, I I was that 21-year-old and somebody said, good luck, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> yeah. And he owned a jewelry store. He'd been in the jewelry business for a long time. And so, unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be a lot of encouragement out there for anybody, um, whether it's just yeah. jewelry industry or any business. You know, you just, you got to have just a lot of, um, I don't know, stupid energy to go after it. And um, yeah, but you know what, one of the things that we did, I mean, we were a, a coin shop basically yeah. and we realized what we didn't know. And, uh, and so what we did is we hired consultants. We hired consultants for inventory management, for, uh, you know, cash flow management, uh, uh, for management, management, people management. Yeah. Sure, um, and and you're very much like that too. I mean, you are, you are one of the largest seekers of knowledge I've ever met. You know, um, mm-hmm. and so I, I, I would think you know based upon the life that I know that you that you live is maybe your your advice or my advice would also be just realize what you don't know, and yeah. then find that knowledge from somebody. Yeah. Um, you know, you said you had a lot of faith, but you realized that you couldn't just. Uh, faith your way through it you you had to right. you had to do the work too yeah you know um, definitely and so. uh, but you know jimmy i mean we've got we got probably a whole nother podcast we could talk about between you know how we met and some of the things that are going on with you that uh, maybe we should um continue on with this next week or next yeah time. we'll do that we'll do that and, uh, <laughs> another time <laughs> so um okay so the where you're at right now is a you, well tell us about your store right now i mean uh you know full basically full service jeweler jewelers on staff 
Yep. You know, uh, we got a 2,800 square feet. Um, you know, we're, we finally, years ago, we broke that million dollar mark. So we're in the million dollar club and, um, you know, I've got uh, eight full-time people. I've got, um, you know, three, uh, jewelers on staff. I've got, uh, mm-hmm. you know, four sales associates and, you know, part-time bookkeeper and, and different things like that. So where do you want to be, you know, this, <laughs> the, uh, cliche job interview question. So where do you want to be five years from now? What do you want to, what do you want to be doing in five years? Um, you know, I'm just, I'm having too much fun right here. I mean, I just, I really enjoy it. Um, you know, I would, okay. um, that was a good to, pat answer. Well, and, and it's serious because I don't, I mean, my wife, cracks me up because she goes you've got more passion for this business than i've ever seen you have in Uh all these years and um and it's um we just you know it's such exciting times i mean we got new technology in the industry we got lab grown diamonds i mean it's it's like the wild wild west right now in our industry right and it's it's in such chaos and upheaval and um and there's new discoveries right around the corner i can't wait to go to vegas and see you know what kind of new things are out there and what's going on and learn from people out there um (laughs) but you know if i was to do anything more it would be to travel um you know i i really have a passion to teach business in third world countries um Mm -hmm. i've tried to do micro business lending in the past and i don't really enjoy that um but I, what I really enjoy is teaching and empowering young kids on uh, either how to, how to be a good um, employee or how to mm-hmm. be an entrepreneur, um, you know, and by and teaching. And I'm going to the word steward in there. And, and being a good steward of, uh, yep. you know, their resources, their time, their talents, their sure. money, all that good stuff. And um, so. Beautiful. Um, all right. Well, we won't. We'll continue this. Uh, we'll continue the story <laughs> next time and, and dive into some more details. How's that? That'd be great because I want to hear uh, more about you and uh, how we met and because uh, that, that was a real special time for me. So <laughs> You know, and again, I, I just, uh, uh, it, it's funny when I, I bet you 99% of the jewelers that are listening to this right now would be, you know, they would have a very similar story in terms of how, things came oh, along and exactly you know we almost lost the building or we almost you know yeah. or maybe just, they did lose a building and had to start all yeah. over you know yeah exactly um, and, i uh, mean uh, yeah there's a lot of, i mean my tragedies are are minimal compared to some of the people that i've had opportunity to share with yeah. or talk with yeah and we you haven't know. even told the tractor story yet <laughs> That's the 